Before I start my video guys, I'm going to be giving away 10,000 Ultra Mythic tokens in this video. All you have to do is make a particular comment down below and that comment will be shown in the middle of the video. If you want your chance to win, I'll be drawing this live on my stream on Monday. Whoever's name is drawn out of the hat is the winner, but I will be claiming a secondary winner, a backup winner on that live stream just in case the first person does not actually claim their prize. Good luck if you enter, now on to the video. Hello survivors and welcome to another Walking Dead Road to Survival video. And in this video we're going to be taking a first look at Gold Mythic Rosie, who is going to be another holiday hero character coming to the game. This time it's going to be for the 4th of July event. The 4th of July obviously is a holiday in America and it's a celebration basically celebrating the movie that came out quite a long time ago starring Will Smith, a sci-fi action movie, and every year they just celebrate the fact that that movie was was really good, basically. Um, if we look at her visually, you can see she is holding an attached weapon, and she's a brand new character in this game. Visually, there's a lot of iconography here, um, quite reminiscent with uh, what, what we've kind of seen on posters, on the We Can Do It posters. We looked at that on my stream. It was actually pretty cool. And if we look at her stats on the left-hand side, as a level 1,440 gold mythic character LB3, she is going to have 15,265 attack, 26,714 defense, and a massive 34,346 HP. She is a strong character. She has the control role, and of course is a mythic character. And again, like I say, she is going to be a member of the Holiday Heroes but this character seems to be more of a defensive version of a holiday hero, whereas a lot of the other ones are offensive. But we'll look into the rest of her kit just to see what else she has to offer, but it's going to be a defensive character, guys, for sure. If we take a look at her Adrenaline Rush, we can see it's called National Defense. It's a 75 AP cost rush. This character gets 200% defense for three turns and 100% bonus HP while battling on the defense team confuse all enemies for one turn it is a 75 ap cost rush so it is a little bit slow but based on the rest of this character's kit you're not necessarily wanting this rush to go off too often but if it does go off it's very powerful obviously she's going to get a big big boost on a defense rating for three turns that will actually multiply with her defense bonus that she gets from defending as well if if she actually does her special skill so we're going to be looking at like i think like a, a 400 to 500 percent defense buff your 100 percent bonus hp of course is amazing and um yeah the confuse the confuse is really really powerful i think it's the first character that actually does something to all enemies when it comes to a control that actually is debilitating i think we have seen twos and threes up until now but this character isn't likely to rush super often. It's not like it's going to be a turn 3 rush. It's most likely to be like a turn 4 or turn 5 rush. And then like a turn, you know, 8 to 10 rush. So much slower on the rush turnaround. But that's just based on the power of other things in her kit. Now for testing, you might have thought it's difficult to get this character to actually rush. But when a shield is the last character alive or the only character they do not do their specialist skill. They will do their basic attacks. They'll do their signature moves as a priority every single time. Now, I'm going to defend on the Scotsman here. And you're just going to see the rush go off. Basically, you're going to see that bonus HP come in. You're also going to see the big boost when it comes to the defense. And obviously, the confused. That's the, the big one when it comes to all of my teammates. Or all of my team, sorry, getting confused. That's going to be attacking some of them. And obviously, potentially getting attacked myself. But... I have got some focus blocking on some of my characters. So there are some bypasses on this, but um, there are going to be some pitfalls to that as well, which we'll check out later on in the video. So we'll look at the upgrades on the Adrenaline Rush, and you can see at grade three, it gets the 100% defense boost. So it goes from 100% up to 200%. At grade five, it gets plus 100% bonus HP. So I guess that would be a full on upgrade rather than just anything else, because it, initially it is just going to be no bonus HP. And then at LB2, it gets upgraded where on defense, all enemies will get confused for one turn. So obviously getting a big boost at LB2, but I will say just at grade three, that is actually pretty decent just for the fact that the defense boost is going to be very, very nice in terms of her survivability. The bonus HP is actually quite nice as well, but you're going to need to get the grade five. So if you've got limited amount of pulls on the ultra token wheel, then... 
Hopefully you get lucky. LB2 won't just bring the stats. It will also bring the full power on this Adrenaline Rush. Now the Adrenaline Rush I think is very powerful indeed. And I think a lot of people will just see the confused to all enemies being a massive problem. But like I said, it's not going to go off too often. So it is a little bit more balanced. It does only last for one turn. But you still got to be very careful on how you like give this character AP in any way. There's other characters that this character is going to be using the same team as. For instance, let's say Barker. Barker gives someone 100% AP on his Adrenaline Rush. And he can get it off turn one with a command. So it could potentially go to Rosie. It could potentially go to Rosie. Bit of RNG there. But if that rush goes off turn two, then you're not going to be able to do your natural rushes turn three. And you're going to be confused attacking your own team. And it's going to get allow the defense team to kind of get, like, get a stranglehold on the fight. So... You've definitely got to try and deal with Rosie in some way, either with control or hard nuking her really early on in the fight. The second that defense boost goes in, you're in a lot of trouble. Now next up, Rosie has got a signature move and it is called Exhausted Workforce. It has got an initial cooldown of turn one, cooldown of four turns, number of uses unlimited. Three enemies get 7,000 exhaust for two turns. Heal this character by 75% of their max HP for the rest of combat. So, this is going to be the first real introduction of Exhaust early on in a fight. It's going to be turn one signature move, and it's going to be pretty heavy indeed. This does mean that if you have a character gain 100% AP, they'll take 70,000 damage. This is really excessive, honestly. Attack team characters have like 25 to 30k damage. This is very reminiscent of like, in terms of power, like Zachary levels of power. And I personally don't really think this sort of heavy amount of exhaust is super healthy, but I'm sure some people are going to be absolutely loving it. When it comes to the heal, it is extremely powerful. That for the rest of combat is nasty, but you can potentially steal this away with Ransack, so that is a problematic for, for Rosie. And because it hasn't got a really quick cooldown, she's not going to be able to easily get that back up on herself, but otherwise, that's really nice sustain. If you haven't got a Ransack weapon or anything to cleanse positive effects, you're in a lot of trouble because 75% of her max HP is her highest base stat and that does mean she's going to get like big big amounts of hp healed every single turn she doesn't need to be attacked for this to happen for instance if you want to compare her to like uncle sam uncle sam has to be hit this is just going to be going over and over and over again every single turn now she is a control character so she's not going to get any bonuses to the heal like she's not going to be getting bonus hp or anything like that but she will have a better chance to prop the exhaust so if you do have like resist mods you will have effectively up to a 40% reduction in your resistance chance. Just worth noting. The same can actually be said for her Adrenaline Rush Confuse as well. Okay, so we're going to hit the defend action on Ghost. And what should happen is Rosie should do her signature move. Three of my teammates or three of my characters, should I say, will get exhausted for 7,000. And then she'll have her, her heal over time. There's the heal over time. And the exhaust came in on Kenny. This is not great. This is not great. I'll focus this character up the top. And I'm going to uh, do my signature move. I should gain 35 AP from doing the signature move. And then I will gain, I believe, 31 afterwards. So I won't be gaining 100% of my AP, but it will be enough. It should be um, 28,000 damage I take here. But it really depends, honestly, on the order of how things happen. And whether it's... I mean, if it says 66, it does say 66. I take 70,000. So... That The order of things happening there is actually a bit interesting. You don't gain the AP from the signature move first, even though that's the, the first thing you're doing is the signature move. You're gaining the AP from the takedown first, then gaining the AP from the signature move, which is actually really weird because I'm pretty sure if there was a weapon that was AP down on the character, I wouldn't. I, it would drain the AP. Interesting there. I'm not really sure what was going on, but I obviously I got nuked. Even if it did work the way I would have assumed, I'm, I would have taken 28,000 damage, and in this situation, Kenny only has 19,000. Kenny has one of the lowest HPs in the game. We've also got other characters like um, Ghost here, who I think has AP gain somewhere on his kit as well. So I'll just do his signature move, and he does take 28,000 in this case. So you can see much more reduced AP, but the exhaust is actually brutal. Okay, guys, it's that time of the video where you can enter the Ultra Mythic Token giveaway for 10,000 Ultra Mythic Tokens. All you have to do is type in the comments Independence Day along with a longer comment. Don't just type Independence Day because you could be spammed out by YouTube. Just be aware if you do just type Independence Day, you could have your 
comment effectively blocked by YouTube and you will not actually be entered into the giveaway. Best of luck if you enter. Now back to the video. So we'll look at the upgrades on the signature move here and you can see at grade two, it gets plus 2000 exhaust. So it goes from 5,000 up to 7,000 exhaust. At grade four, it gets upgraded. So then that's when the hill gets added in. So very, very uh, low grade. The hill gets added in at 75% hill for the rest of combat. At limit break one, it gets minus one to starting cooldown, so it goes from two turns down to one turn. This is pretty powerful, but as long as it's in the first two turns, that's actually pretty good. But at LB3, it gets the big boost, where it gets plus two exhaust targets. Initially, it's only going to be one exhaust target, which, I mean, still could potentially be damaging, but it's going to be completely RNG. I think a lot of the time, most people are going to have maybe one or two characters in a team that have AP gain, you know, like Trader has AP gain and Trader can give AP to other characters that, you know, are part of his allegiance, part of the uh, NWO. So if it doesn't land on them and let's say lands on your command or your like Carol or something like this, there's no real risk there. LB3 is where you kind of need to get the best potential out of this signature move when it comes to the exhaust. However, the hill is very early on, so it's always going to be nice. So this signature move again is, is very powerful for sure and exhaust is extremely extremely potent for especially at the moment because there are so many characters in the game that have unnatural ap gain you know if you gain it from takedowns if you gain it from um, extra ap gain on your passives extra ap gain on your signature moves not natural ap gain on your signature move not natural ap gain on your basic attacks but there's so many damage dealers that have it right now this character kind of counters like i'd say like 25 to 30 prime characters you know and that is a problem honestly i think that's a problem there's not too many characters that you can kind of build a team with with rosie on a defense team because of this exhaust and she's gonna be getting this exhaust off it's gonna be very hard to control this character based on other parts of her kit and namely the passives is where that's going to be a problem as she has got those mythic abilities like i say she has got precision because she is a controller this is gonna be 40 percent reduction to your own resist when she tries to control you and she has quite a few control things in her kit already you can see exhaust and confuse next one is when performing human shield 100 percent chance to stun an enemy for two turns and this obviously means you have a 40 percent less chance to resist it if you have a resist mod if you have a character that has debilitating status effect resist base of like 40 percent you effectively have zero at that point so she counters quite a few characters and and mods and her control is going to be very very powerful the next one is where your control against her is going to be less powerful unless you do use a precision character against her 70 percent resistance to debilitating status effects this is stun impair days you know all the good stuff but it also does include normalize so it's going to be a 70 percent resistance to normalize so this is the third character in very recent succession that has got massive amounts of normalized resistance which honestly is a little frustrating because i would say normalize exists for these more powerful specialists i prefer to see normalized resistance on characters that don't have those pinnacle level of defense teams specialist skills but i'm mainly thinking about game balance rather than trying to sell a character and this is obviously gonna sell a character now the last passive is called faulty focus whenever an enemy gains focus 100 percent chance a damage roll enemy gets minus 75 percent attack for two turns now we did see with that confused rush a couple of my characters did actually get focus and it looked pretty fine and dandy but brutus did indeed have a minus 70 percent attack buff on him and that basically nullifies all damage output that he's going to be able to bring to the table even though brutus does get huge amounts of boosts in certain scenarios teamed up with the scotsman and the scotsman being you know certain amount of hp and his weapon and his passives it's still going to be minus 75 percent which is just rough but then again it could potentially go to another enemy but do remember if like three characters on your team do gain focus then there's a hundred percent chance that three enemies get minus 75 percent attack for two turns okay so we start the fight and you can see that i have used dario as a leader and dario has three negative status effects that he puts on an enemy 
randomly and they did land on Rosie but she resisted all three because she has got 70% chance to resist she resisted all three it was stun daze and impair but she is obviously not stunned not dazed or impaired I'm gonna try and do Williams days to see if we can stop her from using her signature move we're not gonna be able to do that I'm gonna try and use the normalize from Titan to see if we can normalize her we're not gonna be able to do that it's going to be very hard to break through 70% on the debilitating status effects. This is more powerful than the resilient specialist skill when it comes to those things. The only thing that can actually counter this in any sort of way is going to be um, a precision character. And there aren't too many like top tier precision characters outside of like Trader, but she counters Trader's AP gain. So you can sort of see the issue here. Um, I'm going to just do whatever his thing does. I don't think it does anything to be resisted. We just want to see her do her human shield now. And I'm just going to defend. I don't think I've got any AP gain potential here. Um, but we've, she should defend. So as you can see, she defended. And I actually did get a character stunned. William on the left-hand side has got a two-turn stun. And again, like I say, this is increased chance to actually proc. If I had like a... An 80% resist mod, it would actually be a 40% resist mod. And 80% is a lot, but 40% not so much. Okay, so we'll look at her passive upgrades. And you can see at grade 1, she gets the first half of human force, giving it a 50% chance to stun an enemy for 2 turns when she performs the human shield specialist skill. At grade 2, she gets the first half of precision, and that is a 20% lower resistance against this character. At grade 3, she gets the second half of human force, so then it's going to be a 100% chance to stun an enemy when she does the human shield action. At grade 4, she gets the first half of endure, which is a 30% resistance to debilitating status effects. And then at grade 5, she gets the first half of faulty focus. Whenever an enemy gains focus, 50% chance a damage roll enemy get 75% attack for two turns then we move on to the limit break upgrades you can see at limit break one precision two comes in enemy resistances are 20% lower against this character endure two comes in at lb2 making a 70% total resistance to debilitating status effects and at lb3 faulty focus two comes in making a 100% chance a damage roll character gets minus 75% attack for two turns whenever an enemy gains focus and this can prop multiple times in the same turn so if you've got five damage characters and three of them just gain focus three of them will get minus 75 percent attack so her passives are extremely powerful she's basically countering like three or four things in the game with her kit so far and it kind of seems like we've gone back to the old war of champions promo character effectively this is the the must-have character to pick up before war of champions so we'll just go over the special skill and it is obviously human shield we have seen it throughout the kit she's getting bonuses from it on her passive but i'll just read through it while this character is defending all attacks from human enemies may only target them swipe right on character icon to defend but that's basically when you are attacking on a defense team it's going to have it happen automatically unless she can use her signature move or unless she can use her rush if she can't do either of those things she will then do her human shield the only thing that will break it is if those things can actually happen or if she's controlled. That's the only way you can break through. Human Shield is very powerful on the right character and Rosie definitely seems like the right character for Human Shield. Now lastly, Rosie has a weapon where she gets a lot more power on top of what she already has and it's Rosie's defensive rivet gun, which is interesting because she is a strong character but... I know it's just to play into the fact of the old sort of art stuff. But on the left hand side we can see that it has 45% HP, 35% defense, improved taunt. When being attacked, 60% chance to taunt the enemy for their next two turns. And then in the fourth slot it has improved Stonewall. This character gets 50% defense at the start of each wave for two turns. This character's defense cannot be reduced. We've seen this on a weapon, I think the force slot we've seen on a weapon before. So obviously, very nice weapon indeed. Heavy on the stats, you're going to be able to upgrade this three times. So you could go for 55% HP, or you could go for 50% defense and 45% HP. It really depends on you, how you want to gear this character, and what sort of leader maybe you're potentially using her with. The improved taunt when hit is brand new effectively it is an improved version of Ronaldo's taunt on his weapon. So it's a much more powerful version of that. And 
considering this character's a shield, you're going to be attacking this character a lot more often. And focus can bypass it, but if you have focus, you're going to be massively punished. So kind of like massive uh, counter within her own kit there. And the last slot is the improved stone, which we have seen in the game before, I believe. 50% defense for the first two turns is very nice, just because if she does get that signature move off of the first turn, she's going to have less, you know, defense, basically. Because if she did shield the first turn, she would have a 50% defense boost. This should stack with that shield buff again on turn two. And I think basically it should effectively give her either 125 or 150% defense boost. So very nice weapon, obviously. When you see dark blue like this on a promo character, you can pretty much guarantee it. So that is Gold Mythic Rosie, and you are going to see this character on the Ultra Mythic Wheel, of course. This is the last Ultra Mythic character to be released before Warrior Champions, by no surprise, is an absolutely crazy character. And is going to be extremely difficult to take out. I think we're going back to the more most powerful characters in the game being on defense. And that's never fun, I'm going to be honest. That is never fun. We'll see th how things pan out, though. Do tell me your thoughts on this character in the comments down below, guys. Don't forget to enter that giveaway either. And as always, keep on surviving, guys. Keep on surviving.